Hello, welcome back to the podcast. I know last episode I said we would be doing the exercise from the book that I've been reading called Best Year Ever, but I should really stop making these promises because every week there's something a little different and maybe I want to talk about something else. So here we are. And today's topic is why I fell out of love with fitness. So I've been into fitness, sports or everything like that, exercise and stuff like that since I was a little kid. Like the second I turned three, I was in dance um, or no, I was five. <laughs> doesn't matter. But I, anyways, I was in dance. I wanted to play hockey. I wanted to skate. I wanted to play basketball. I wanted to do all the sports. And um, it kind of just became me and my identity. And lately I've been in this like constant search for identity again and I feel like I'm not out of this quarter life crisis at all (laughs) but I think it's starting to things are starting to piece together finally and I'm starting to find myself again which is very nice and refreshing the only problem with that is yes things are piecing together but then you when you're starting to figure out yourself then other things pop up where you have to work through it and obviously working through things and trauma takes time. So specifically when it comes to fitness here, I, the last three years, I just, I kind of fell out of love with it. And it's, I'm not too sure where it came from for the longest time, but really just reflecting and understanding like what, what it might be, why I'm fighting it so hard. One main thing that kind of came out of it was that the biggest thing, so this kind of works with, unfortunately, this week is my mom's death anniversary. And well, so she died from a stroke kind of out of nowhere. And the only reason I say kind of is that um, I went to school for this. I was in bachelor kinesiology and like did a lot of exercise physiology and all that fun stuff. So I studied this and essentially strokes and heart attacks are very, not always, obviously, it really depends on the person, but can be very prevent, like it's preventable for the most part. Like if you exercise, eat well, move a lot, do all those fun things, then in a way it's preventable. And When my mom got a stroke out of the blue, it didn't really hit me that, like, the whole my mom dying and then it kind of relating to my career thing until maybe the last year or so. Like, it's come up, but I've never really, like, dealt with it. So the biggest reason, like, this whole fitness thing for me um, really went on a down, like, a downturn in terms of career, even just, like, fitness for myself is, like, I went to school for this. I paid stupid amount of money to get this degree to help others and make sure other people like can recover from strokes or heart attacks or prevent it or just in general have a good healthy lifestyle. Obviously, my head goes to this really, really extreme thought process of I killed my mother and really I know I didn't. I know it's not like that. And that's a lot, a lot of pressure on one person's shoulders. But unfortunately, my mom wasn't like the most like healthy or she didn't prioritize eating healthy or exercise. And a lot of like it's that's okay. I just the reason I'm blaming myself and I've blamed myself for I don't know how many years, apparently, subconsciously, is that. I could have helped her or I tried to motivate her and she wouldn't listen or things like that. Or how can I be in this industry helping other people with their lifestyle and quality of life changes or their cardiovascular health or anything like that when I could have barely helped my mom, someone who is right there, someone I saw every single day. So everything just kind of plummeted and I guess in a way like the hate for fitness and stuff started to add to it without me really knowing like I just resented it tried to stay away from it really like didn't think about it and I think a lot of it did really really stem from that blame that I put on myself which is very unrealistic and I know that 
<sighs> um, but yeah, this is like first time I'm really talking about this, and it's just oh, that's Billy. That's my new cat here. He's so big now. <laughs> yeah, hi, buddy. Okay, he's very talkative. <laughs> but um, I've just been reflecting and. <sighs> I've been working on myself for so long, like three years, and honestly, that's not even long enough. And I've been journaling, and this has really come up. And it's not that, like, my love for fitness or training or any of that really left. It was more like I was suppressing it because I don't know why. Like, it was because I blamed myself for this death when it wasn't completely my fault like it, it probably isn't right like it's just it's so hard when you blame yourself and put all that stress and weight on your shoulders and it's like now that I'm working on myself even better I'm reflecting that you know that wasn't my fault necessarily and like I need to take care of myself but also instead of going the one way on the continuum because I didn't do enough for my mom and just give up on this whole career in general, I could just push it the other way, right? So essentially, really promoting stroke and heart health, like prevention or whatever, like really promoting a healthy lifestyle, really helping myself and others online to help promote a healthy lifestyle to help encourage and motivate others to move more to do more physical activity for them and improve their quality of life so that's kind of where I am right now and it's kind of I don't know if this is the correct way of using it sorry but I feel like in my head it feels very meta if that makes sense where it's like I'm starting to realize and fall in love with fitness again all like and figure out this trauma related to my mom and my career and everything all around the same week that it's my mom's sixth year like death anniversary I feel like that's kind of cool um and like I don't know what's happening but I've been feeling really good I'm not sure how I'll feel on that Friday but we'll see it doesn't really yeah but I just wanted to talk about how like I've been feeling lost for so long and it's like without digging deep and actually taking a step back and understanding traumas without like actually like, it's terrifying to dig deep and like actually going into there finding it out you know obviously it's not that I could have saved three years of this like self-discovery thing but like I did figure all of this out in less than a month well, or, or like maybe a little more, I don't know. But essentially what I'm trying to say is like, your this journey goes through like these, these ups and downs really are really part of that journey is what I'm trying to say. And I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not saying I'm all fixed and ready to go, but I'm excited for my future again. I'm excited to be alive I'm excited to be here on this planet I'm excited to help others with their fitness journey and whatever it might be I'm excited to help others you know with stroke and injury prevention and heart attack prevention a lot of preventative things if we can which this is another topic but really the health care system should really focus on more prevention in my opinion but that's that's a different episode all together if we do that um but I just wanted to talk about like that I'm I'm happy it it's weird because it feels scary to be happy but things are going the right way and what I'm trying to say in this episode is I I just encourage you to sit with your feelings it's scary um it's hard and maybe nothing will come out of it but if you just do that often enough if you just work on yourself and be patient with yourself things will start to kind of link and like start to come together slowly and once you get out of that dark tunnel like you'll probably be 
the happiest version of yourself. You'll feel very authentic to you. You'll feel like the world is on your side. You'll, I don't know. It's it's a great feeling to be in this place right now. And obviously it's not like I'll be happy like this every single day. But I'm with everything finally coming together slowly, I just feel good. And understanding that things aren't your fault or the pressures you put on yourself may be fake, may not even be real. It's just a story you're telling yourself. It's, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's something you just need to sit with. Like, we get so distracted by the world and what's happening out there by social media, by consumerism, I don't know, whatever you might be watching or doing that we don't even take a second for ourselves. And this is not me saying like take a break and like take a week off or something, but like every few days maybe take an hour of your day to journal or like not a full hour, but like an hour of your day just for yourself to like sit with your feelings. You don't necessarily need to be, you know, on and like on like watching Netflix every single minute of the day if you're not working, if you need to rest, you don't need to be doing something all the time, but just taking the time to reflect on what's going on with your life, taking the time to maybe be grateful for what's happening and also understanding like if you are sad or you're lost, that that's okay and being patient with yourself. Um, that's kind of the biggest takeaway I got. Like understanding that your subconscious is very, very powerful and trauma digs deep even if you don't realize it and that you just need to take the time and put yourself first, prioritize you, understand that you're not behind on life, you're not a disappointment, everything takes time, everyone's on their like own journey type of thing. I know I sound very like, I don't know, hippy dippy, but it's like, it's just true. Like, I've been going through it for, like, like I said, years, and I finally accepted that this, tr like, my mom's death and the trauma that comes from it just won't go away, and, like, it is what it is, and it's time to just stop becoming or being the victim. I think, okay, no matter what people say about victim shaming, or, like, you know, blaming yourself or being the victim I don't think it's healthy I don't think it's good but I think it's just part of the grieving process of whatever it might be I felt like a victim for like six years and like obviously it'll still come up like I'm just shaming myself I'm like putting myself down I'm feeling sorry for myself but really like I think that's okay because it'll I don't think anyone should stay in that mindset for that long but I think I'm finally ready to be like, to be able to take control and take hold of my own life and my own future again. Not let depression cripple me, not let anxiety cripple me, not let other mental like illnesses like pull me back right now. And it's just, obviously they might in the future or they will, but understanding that there are things I have control over, there are like, I have great people that surround me. I have a career I can look forward to again. And that's all from simply, not simple, but like actually just sitting with yourself, putting the ego away, putting everything away and sitting with yourself and your feelings. It's scary, but it's necessary. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed the episode and I really hope you prioritize yourself and sit with yourself and I hope that helps your journey of whatever it might be, whether it be healing, whether it be self-discovery, identity, whether it be just, I don't know, finally like taking that next step that's so scary. I want you to prioritize yourself. I want you to take time for you and shut everything else out so then you're able to move forward towards whatever it is that you're working towards um yeah so thanks for listening and i'll talk to you next week bye